over uh, on a Saturday morning. Yeah, it's fantastic. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, you are seeing my screen. You can hear me properly, everybody. Yes, I think it's all good. Okay, great. I see a chat there. Agita, you help me with the chat, all right? 120, all right. that's a lot of people, all right, on a Saturday morning. And we hope that, I put that two hours was earlier, but you're doing only one hour, don't worry. And uh, maybe a little bit extra time, okay? Please feel free to chat and ask questions anytime you want to and put up your hands. I, if I cannot see, Gita, please help me. Uh, what we want to see is that at the end of this um, course, it is introduction only, uh, at the end of it, you will have no, what are derivatives, okay? Maybe during the time when the market was crashing, you could have gone in and made a lot of money, all right? It's like I said, maybe you can remember. The bull climbs up the stairs very slowly, bull, okay? But the bear, which means the market coming down, jumps off the window. So a lot of people could make a lot of money in the futures market easily, okay? Then uh, you would know why we use derivatives, which was the idea that if you have hold of some stocks during the crash, you would have, you would have uh, sold futures and you would have protected your position so that you would not have lost in that time, okay? So the other one that, that we are using it for risk management purposes and how these derivatives are traded used to be traded on the exchange in the, on the floor, but now it's all uh, on electric electronic exchange. And then we'll talk a little bit about researchers, okay, or where most of the materials that I got here or the textbook to use for uh, futures and options that is derivative are uh, from John Howe. I've been using that textbook for 30 over years, okay? So that is the futures textbooks to use, all right? Okay, um, at the end of this course, you would know all this already, okay? So I'm going to go through very slowly the first definitions of all the futures contract. There are many future, uh, derivatives contracts and it, and derivatives, futures are derivatives, so are options, okay? So what are the difference? You can, we'll go through it uh, now. Okay, futures and forwards are similar, okay? Futures is an agreement, okay, to between the buyer and the seller to sell an underlying asset at a predetermined price, okay, that is determined today. Uh, so the, there was a difference between futures and forward then. The difference between futures and forward is that futures are traded on the exchange, like your Indonesian stock exchange, uh, IDX, right? And then the forwards are over the counter. Over the counter means like the banks. You have to go to the banks and then you buy a forward contract, maybe for your Indonesian rupiah, okay, against US dollar. And it's an agreement between the you and the bank, okay? For And it's the same for the US dollar in say uh, three months time. And usually it's like, um, it must be backed by a certain orders like your goods order, okay? So that is a forward contract. So now what's the difference between futures and options? Okay, futures is an obligation. You enter the contract, you must fulfill the obligation. If you buy, you must take delivery. If you sell, you must deliver, okay? Whereas for an option, it's like this. You, for a little bit of premium, it's like an insurance. For a little bit of premium, you you buy, okay, you pay the premium and you have the right, but not the obligation to uh, buy the underlying asset at a predetermined price, okay? What does that mean? That means that if, okay, like you bought a option, 
a call option okay to buy a certain stocks if you got a stocks in indonesia okay and then if the price comes down you don't have to exercise it you can just go out to the market and buy it at the cheaper price but you just lose the premium okay that's that's the beauty of options and with this combination of forwards futures and options you can do a lot of things that's the beauty of derivatives is the best subject to me when i went to school many years ago in university of new south Wales, when i came to derivatives that was the best subject i came across that was the last subject and that was the one that you know prompt me to go forward and to be involved in the futures industry in malaysia okay okay when what we did futures in the i was in the exchange okay and i did the contract specification which means i draw up some contracts like this kind okay what are not this one this one is indonesian uh, idx30 Okay, what I did was FBM KLCI, uh, KLCI 30 index. Okay, what you do is you come to my course, okay, class, course, long course. I'll make you do an assignment that says um, how to do, how to write up all the contract specifications. Okay, like what? Like you started with nothing, you just write. I want to do a contract spec. I want to do a new futures contract spec. And my underlying is the KLCI for me. For you is the IDX30. Uh, Gita tells me that the IXD30 is um, the newer version. It just came out. So somebody must have written the IDX30 index. Hmm? So then you decide the contract size and value. So in this case, in the example here, the multiplier it says is Indonesian rupiah, 100,000, uh, right? 100,000, correct. Okay. So the contract value is the um, IDX 30, which is about 468 times 100,000 Indonesian rupiah. That is the contract size, okay? Then uh, quality here, in here, the quality for all stock index futures is the same, okay? Quality here maybe refers to like, say just now I said crude palm oil. Then if it's a crude palm oil, you have to deliver a certain quality. Like in Malaysia, your crude palm oil for uh, fat is like, it must not be more than 40% fatty acids. And if you go to the refinery, you can only be difference of 2% uh, kind of thing. That's the quality. Okay, then delivery date, okay. In this case, the delivery date, it's, um, I think it's the end of the month, okay. For us, it's the end of the month, okay. Uh, end of the business uh, month, which means that the last trading day of the month, all right. And then the delivery place for, say, maybe crude palm oil, uh, for us is the three pots. Uh, they will name the pots. So you just take delivery or send your delivery to the pots. So in the exchange traded, uh, okay, I welcome questions if there are. Um, if any questions, you want to be a trader, a dealer? Okay. Okay, I'll continue on first. Okay, uh, in the liquidity, okay, in exchange traded is all standardized because it's standardized, which means that you have got certain, um, certain uh, values there. So everything is standardized, then you can have liquidity. Liquidity is, is when you find, when you go into the market, when you need liquidity, when you go to the market, you can buy, you want to get out also. So you have to find buyers and sellers. Uh, that's what liquidity means. So it, it means that a long contract, it means that a long contract, if you're long, long means you bought the contract, you hold it. That means that you are long, okay? And when you're long a contract, it means that you can easily sell it off. Uh, and the beauty of stock index futures is this. You can actually short the contract, 
that's what I was saying in the beginning. You can sell first without having anything. So that's why you have you do futures so that you can sell first. Okay. Then because it's liquid, okay, then the prices is very competitive. There's many prices and there is supply and demand in the market. And that's when you get good prices, very small, big good prices means that it's a very small difference between the buying price and the selling price, the bid and offer, okay? And the thing about exchange traded contract is, the good thing about it is that you don't have to worry about your counterparty. Counterparty means another person, the person, the buyer or the seller. If you are the buyer, what are you worried about? You're worried about the seller you will not actually deliver for you to you at the price that you want to buy, right? Okay. If the prices go up, right? <laughs> you can have the lower price. So in exchange traded contracts, it's all cleared by the clearing house. The clearing house is attached to the exchange. And the clearing house will have the counterparty risk which means that even if the other party do not uh, deliver, the clearing house would find delivery for you, okay? Uh, that's what it means. And the clearing house in this case will minimize the risk of default. Uh, we don't have much default. How do they manage this? It's because they actually, for futures contract, they ask you for a margin first every day, okay? When you first have an initial margin and then every day, at the end of the day, it will be marked to market. It's quite marked to market means that you use the settlement price and calculate the profit and loss and put it into your account every day. I will, sh I will show you the example afterwards, okay? And any questions? What are the questions, Gita, for the chat? Hey, yes, so there's a question from Gilang. Hi, uh, Gilang. Good morning. Uh, she's currently a sorry. Yeah, uh, he's currently a futures trader right now who trades. Very uh, serious. Uh, Gilang, hi. Can you uh, on cam and uh, perhaps you want to tell Dr. Jacinta a little bit about yourself and your question? Yes. Don't be shy. Yes, please. I'm waiting. We are waiting. Lang, are you there? He just has his question. <laughs> yes, but uh, he's currently off the mic as well. Okay, perhaps, okay, perhaps okay, something's uh, nice okay. And there's also question from uh, Ferdinand. What roles of derivative in industry 4.0? Is that um? Do you want to answer that or later? What is the okay? Your I, I will take the question later. I'll talk to him later, okay? Okay. Uh, okay. Anything else that is easy for everybody? Okay, <laughs> the other one says, how I control uh, NASDAQ forex. Oh my goodness, there are ones, okay? I want to know how you control many, many, many management things. That is a very good question, okay? It's, an, it's, uh, it's another course, all right? But I can tell you, uh, Starting earlier, okay. I'm a for uh, a trader, Gilang. All right, how I trade, okay. I want to know how you control money management. The easiest way, okay, to control your money management is stop loss. That's another cause. So, but in the stop loss, you do linear trading, okay. Linear trading means that you don't, I know a lot of people like to double up the position if they are wrong, okay, but you don't do that. You just take your losses and keep on trying. Really? Uh, it's not averaging down for you? Uh, <laughs> you have come for my course, okay? Um, <laughs> the speakers will... Uh, okay. okay um, uh, we're going uh, too far, perhaps, uh, if you want to return yes. to your... Gita, that is stock market, okay? That is the stock market, Gita. Yes. And um, that is your area, your investment area, okay? Uh, investment is different from uh, trading. Okay, trading is you still do risk management. With risk management, you may be able to do uh, your average down. Okay, but I for me, I don't do average down personally. 
<laughs> okay, I think we managed all the question. Gilang, I can talk to you later if you want to. And Ferdinand, um, the industry 4.0, you caught me off, uh, off because I we are doing 4.0, but your 4.0. I don't know what is your 4.0 and what is the directive roles in your 4.0. Ours is not there anymore, okay? Uh, our 4.0 is going to FinTech and um, so I'm not sure if it's the same, all right? Okay. Thank you, I'll, go, I'll carry on, I'll carry on, okay? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. 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 Then this option, oh my goodness, all right. This options, okay, is like this. It's uh, the right to buy, okay? A core option is the right to buy. When the price goes up, you want to buy at the lower price, at the exercise price, when the price goes up, okay? But if the price comes down, you don't have to do anything. You can go to the market and you can buy in the market, okay? Your rights issue, easier for some of you here. Your rights issue is actually a core option, isn't it, Gita? Okay, you pay the rights price, which is a small premium, and if the uh, and usually the exercise price is lower than the current price, right? Correct. Okay. And then that's why you want to exercise your rights issue, which means that you will pay the exercise price, which is lower than the market price, and then you will um you will. You will get the profit that you buy here low, exercise get a price lower, and then the next minute you sell it in the market, right? And then you make the profit in between. Okay, that's uh, sort of like arbitraging okay? if you do it fast enough. Okay, so options, a lot of combinations, and there's also spreads, all right, which means that you can do a lot of. Um, Fund management, you can do a lot of uh, uh, synthetic position. Synthetic position is like you create a synthetic cash flow. Okay, so that's why I said there it's extremely flexible and it can be combined to achieve whatever objective you want or cash flow that you want. That is like the core option. If the market goes down, you don't want to exercise it. But if the market goes up, you would exercise it, okay? Um, do you want me to draw the uh, the core option chart or? Can I uh, do, do, we, do we have time for no, that? I can. Do I can. You, can, you, can you do that? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Either can I do that on the whiteboard or, or I just do that here? I can't do that. Uh, okay, never mind. I'll, I'll just carry on first then. Okay. 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 Then there are these things called swaps. Okay. Swaps are very interesting. Uh, it's all over the counter. It's over the counter means it's in the banks. Okay. You can have different kinds of swaps. Swap is just exchange cash flow. What do we mean by exchange cash flow? If it's a currency swap, you're in Indonesia, I'm in Malaysia, but we are want to go to Indonesia to do business and you want to come to Malaysia to do business, but we do not want the currency we do not want the currency risk. What we do is we just swap our currency risk, okay? Which means that I always do business in Malaysian ringgit and you always do business in Indonesian rupiah. Uh, that's what currency swaps are. So we have a commodity swaps in the same place, uh, in the same way, there is maybe two kinds of commodities, okay? Or we can have equity swaps, okay, which means that we're just exchanging the cash flow based on our two indices, my FKLI, my KLCI, and your Indonesian uh, L LQ45, right? The other one is LQ45, right? Okay. Then, uh, of course, uh, last time it used to be open outcry. The exchange traded are open outcry. But then, uh, 
now you don't you don't kind of see those kinds of cowboy market anymore it's very nice you, you can see the uh, open outcry the difference between open outcry and electronic trading is this electronic trading you can see a lot of things you can see many depths okay maybe 10 bits down and 10 uh, 10 bits up all right but in um, this electron uh, open up, right? You can see everyone in the market, okay? Which means everybody is crying out in the market in a pit. And you have got hand signals, okay? Hand signals. And it used to be like that in um, a KL, KL exchange, okay? As well as the futures exchange. It used to be, um, it used to be, uh, all your hands. I can only remember a few. Okay, this is one and two kind of thing. Uh, but they still have it. Okay, I went to Chicago uh, 218 and they still have it in the Chicago Board of Exchange and also the CME. Okay. Then uh, here it's we gone through all that ready. So this is the clearing house. And the clearing house is by novation process. It's called the clearing house guarantees every trade because it collects a margin from for each contract. Okay. Uh, then the over counter derivatives is that it's a two party bilateral agreement. Okay, and everything is negotiable. All right, usually the banks would take the advantage. Here. So they will get the pricing to the advantage of the banks. And as it says, it's between corporate clients and financial institutions, that's the bank. And the default risk is very high. The bank can default, the corporate client also can default. Okay. Then uh, this was one of the exam questions usually. What's the purpose of derivative? Okay, the purpose of derivative, number one, if you can't get it right, is risk management. is for hedging purposes. Ah, that's it, okay. But more interesting is that for options especially, because it's, uh, you, when I said you pay only a small margin, but you get a large value, then it's, you get something called leverage, margin leverage. And with this margin leverage, it's like this, some funds. What they do is they'll, they will put the money into fixed deposit and guarantee a return, maybe like those days were 4%, but now everywhere in the world, maybe Australia 2%, okay? And then after that, they take a little bit of money out and with that little bit of money out, they will uh, buy say core option, all right? If the market goes up, they will make a lot of money. So in this case, you are guaranteed return. So you can create synthetic positions. Uh, arbitraging is interesting. Arbitraging is riskless profit, it's alpha. So you get a lot of alpha hunters like myself, okay? We're always looking for temporary mispricing. And if you got mispricing, then you can go into the market, you get the profit. Like just now I said, you can um, buy your rise issue, exercise it, get it out, and then it's still, your price you pay is still below the market price. Then you just sell it off in the market and you make the money immediately, Gator. That's nice, isn't it? Okay. And then uh, we have got the, um, you can uh, the beauty of futures is you can short the futures. Okay. I put wonderful instruments to short the basket of uh, equity stocks. And then, um, of course, we can always, uh, what happens is, uh, you uh, we said we buy a call right just now but you can actually short a call so you buy a call you pay the premium but you short the call which means you another word for short is write the call then somebody gives you the premium so a lot of fund managers actually write calls and put so that they can increase their uh, portfolio earnings and um, that is more than you know and they hope the market doesn't move okay otherwise they will have to uh, do risk management okay so this is the purpose and why we are here today is what we want to do with derivatives okay that the most important we said is this 
we're going to go right deep to the first one, which is to hedge against price fluctuation. That is your risk management. And in risk management, you have a portfolio of stocks. So we're going to discuss about how you can actually calculate the beta or the beta of the portfolio, which is you know the beta to market, okay, which is your market exposure. How you can use that to hedge the portfolio is like um, is like you have got some two stocks say, and then if you know how the stocks behave according to your IDX thirty, then that's that's how they behave is according to beta if you have got those stocks then um, you would calculate the beta of your portfolio which <laughs> data might do okay and show you should show you okay and then uh, i'll show first i'll show first with the malaysian example and show show with the indonesian example and after that you can calculate the portfolio beta and you can see how you can hedge your stocks Okay, so we start with stock index futures. We have to know to H, we have to know the contract specs for the contract specification for your stock index futures. And then to H also, we need to know the fair value. Fair value is like, uh, what is the correct price? Okay, given the number of days to maturity, given the interest rates, given the dividend yield. And then you calculate the fair value. And then, of course, we're going to talk about the users, which is hedging. Okay, maybe some trading strategies if you've got time. Okay, uh, arbitraging, no time, but that's very interesting. Okay, but first, we will start with the risk, which is what we're talking about. Risk management uh, is like the market coming down, the, the pandemic air time, the market coming down, like Gita say. 50%, okay, that's a lot, okay. And then every other stocks also come down as well. Most of the stocks comes down and that is market risk. And so we are going to talk about the market risk, the beta for the market risk and how you hedge the portfolio uh, by selling hedge with the stock index futures. So definitions again, the stock index futures is an exchange traded futures contract between two parties, which is yourself and the uh, broking house going through the exchange, okay, maybe to sell through the uh, other, other broking house for another seller, okay, all, all these parties to deliver, deliver means you sell, all right, a basket of stocks at a particular date, okay, maybe at the end of the month, at the agreed price today. Okay, so why are we using stock index futures? I think we have gone through that already just now, but just to go through again is that we want to use stock index futures over stocks. Why not buy all the 30 stocks? Buy the 30 stocks is very hard. It takes a lot of time. And also, um, it takes a lot of time. So if you just buy one stock index futures and then you can get access to all these uh, 100 over uh, 30 over stocks uh, is very fast. And when um, in Malaysia, okay, my 30 stocks cost a lot of transaction cost, okay, like 0.5% transaction cost. But then um, stock index futures is like RM30 ringgit. Uh, so it's very cheap. So you can get access to the overall broad market at a lower price. And then just now we said as well, you only pay a small initial margin that your indignation case, I read it is 4%. So if 4% is very, very little, okay? So you get 4%, you can make a lot of profits. It's over 100% over profits. Uh, lower brokerage cost, of course. And because if it's well traded, then it's more liquidity, easy to get in, easy to get out. And you can short the futures, which we're going to talk about for risk management purposes. Okay, we talked about just now your market risk, you got stocks. Inside the stocks, you got two kinds of risk that is your market risk and then your firm specific risk, the specific risk of the stock.
So your market risk is systematic, which means that it's across the board. All stocks also will have that. And your particular stock, how it reacts to the market risk is beta. Beta is how your stock moves in accordance with the market. So in this case, the usual way to hedge the market risk is by using a stock index futures. And your stock, okay, the way to uh, your stock index is calculated is uh, your IDX30, I got from the website there, is calculated based on your market cap, just like KLCI, but different is N times the percentage of free float. Free float means that, uh, to me, it means that the number of shares that are in the market, which means that maybe it, maybe I'm not sure, okay, is like uh, less than 5%, okay, the major shareholders, how much they hold. Uh, so that's what it means. So your index is the sum of all the prices, okay, over some value, base value, times a multiplier, usually 100 at the beginning of the period, times the percentage of free float. So if we give an example, say this is a two stock index, then you got stock A, your price is 1,000, and the number of shares in millions is also is uh, 1 billion, okay, 1 billion. And then I just put that percentage of free float, assuming the major shareholders hold 5%, then you got the free float 95%, and then you calculate what's the market cap times the free float, and then you uh, added them up together, you got a base of, um, <laughs> I'm just trying to cite, okay, 1.7 billion, all right, uh, 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 so on the first day, that will be the same, 1.7, 1.7 million, million, okay, um, that will be 100%, all right, that is the base. If the next day, say, the stock A goes up, from 1,000 to 1,050, uh, then you have got a different float market float cap there. It comes to 997,500. And similarly, say stock B falls from 900 to 880, then you have got another free float cap there. And your value is now 1.8, all right, versus just now 1.7. So now you have got, I cannot see over there, you maybe you made 104%, is it? Okay. So you make the market, uh, your portfolio or the uh, index, the portfolio index went up by 4%, okay? Okay, this is Malaysian stocks, I'm more familiar and not so many zeros is easier for me. The commas are they're different from your, is your, your full stock. Okay, your yeah, full stop and my comments are uh, interchangeable. Okay, so now if you want, if for me, I want to, uh, uh, I've got a portfolio of Malaysian stock, very little only, uh, 80, 82,000, okay, my personal portfolio. Okay, and I want to uh, hedge a position. Okay, what do I do? All I have to do, I think market is going to fall tomorrow. It's falling, Malaysian market is falling. Okay, so I will just sell one FKLI futures contract today. Uh, that's all. And instead of selling all my all my stocks in the basket, what I do is I sell one FKLI contract. And in this case, my FKLI contract, my contract specs is 50 ringgit only. So um, the last day of trading is at the end of the month. And I usually trade the spot month because the spot month, uh, spot month means the current month. The current month is the most active. So it's the easiest to go in or come out. Uh, Kita asked me to put this in so that um, you all can know about the Malaysian stocks as well. And then you come to Malaysia and you can trade Malaysian market. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is the Indonesia part for me. All right. Which is your know, same. Your underlying is the IDX30 uh, index. Gita also teach me a lot of things. She says this is a new contract. Uh, the exchange we are promoting, okay, this new index and the new futures for the exchange. And the multiplier 
multiply it times the value is one uh, 100,000, right? Okay. And it goes in terms of 0 0.1 point, which means that just now I saw that my example earlier was um, like 458.4. 4, the next one is 458.3 uh, if it goes down. Okay. Uh, then initial margin, I said just now, is the 4%. You only pay 4% of your contract value, which is index points times the number of contracts times the multiplier. Okay. Then your time is 9 a.m. to 11.30. And then you have got two hours break. You want to be a dealer, okay. It's 13.30 uh, to 15.15. Not bad time, okay. Uh, your settlement is T plus it ends one. way sooner than the Malaysian. <laughs> yes, it's a shorter hours than the Malaysian and longer lunch, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what I see is also your settlement also less, which means that if you make losses and the exchange as your clearing house asks you to pay up your losses, then you have to pay up by tomorrow. In Malaysia, it was T plus two, two days. Okay, I think I skipped the long example already just now. So what we're going to do is the short example. Okay, you can short, okay, the market. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I put Friday. Friday was yesterday. Okay, yesterday I shorted one FKLI. Actually, the price is about 1540 uh, now. But I put a long time ago, 1640. So one FKI at 1640. Then uh and then Monday comes, okay. It's KLCI goes up. Uh are we are we cutting loss? Are we cutting loss? Gita, uh, you said <laughs> cutting loss, right? Uh, are we cutting loss? So I buy back one immediately at 1660.5. Uh then I'll I have a loss of 20 points, okay. So my 20 points is actually times 50 because one point is 50 ringgit. All right, then I still have to pay transaction costs very cheap, 60 ringgit only. So I made a loss of 1,000, um, there's to be a minus there, 1,085 ringgit, okay? If my margin is 4,000, now it's 4,200, then my loss is 27% for over the weekend. Well, over this weekend, I make 27%. <laughs> so that's, that's why it says that for a, for a small margin, okay, mm -hmm. I will make uh you can either make a lot of money, profit a lot, or you can lose a lot. Okay, that's why it says futures is a highly leveraged product. Okay, how does we move work the margining works, the clearing house work? It's like this. Uh, Friday I bought at one one six four zero. Somebody I sold at one four one six four zero. But somebody must have bought 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 it, right? Okay. Uh, so in Monday comes, it goes up to 160.5. I lost the 1085 here. Oops, sorry. And but somebody else made the somebody else made the profit. Okay. Somebody else made this profit. 965. Ah. Uh, so in this case, what's the difference? The difference. Somebody took is a broker. The broker took the difference in the money. Okay, so in this case, I have in your case I have t plus one, but in my case I got t plus two. Stipulated time is t plus two to top up my margin so that it will become uh from this two thousand nine one five it should become four thousand at any time that I hold a position I must have this four thousand, and that's what initial margin is for. Okay, so um, I lose quite a bit. In, in, we, why do I say it's leverage? Is like if I have hold the, all the 30 stocks, then uh, my loss of 20.5 points is only 1.25% if I paid everything upfront for the physical market, stock market. But if I do futures now, my losses, not including transaction costs, is like 25%, 20 to 27%, including transaction cost. Okay, so that's why it's a highly leveraged product. Used to be, people say it's very risky. 
But now people don't say it's risky anymore. They say, oh, it's good. It's very fast. You can trade this product. Uh, with knowledge, you can trade this product, okay? And do well. Okay, so the next one is where you start. Okay, this is the theoretical base, all right? With futures is the same, whether it's a stock index, whether it's a commodity futures, you just take the underlying price, what's the fair price? You just take the underlying whatever price it is, whatever price it is like idx 30 what is it doing now or uh, my FTLI, my PLCI, what is it doing now but you add in a cost of carry uh, for stock index futures your cost of carry it's there is no um c okay there's no c why is there no c oh my goodness i thought i put off my battery just like, okay why is there no C? Okay, there is no C is because um, there's no C is because you don't have to store the index. C is for cost. Okay, you don't have to store your your index. You don't have to put it into no transportation cost. The C is for commodities. Okay. Uh, so your 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 index, the cost of carry includes the time to maturity, which is your T up there. And then the interest rates, R is interest rates. And then the yield is your dividend yield. Okay. So in case of stock index futures is your FT is equals to your SO, which is the stock index. Okay. Plus uh, the stock index and then R minus Y. Okay. R minus Y is your interest rates minus your dividend yield. Okay, which interest rate is what your cost of your cost, your opportunity cost. You pay so much interest rates. Then you minus whatever you get back in dividends. All right. Then you times the number of days. Okay. So in, in my case here in Malaysia, your interest rates is 1%. Okay. My dividends pay for this month, for this month is like 0.5 percent then my spot market is 1645 and then today uh, to the end of the month there's 29 days to maturity then i put it into the fair value calculation so i got 1645 spot plus your cost of carry okay which is your spot time the annualized interest rates uh, minus the dividend rate and then you times it with the number of days, 25 days, over the year, 365 days. Always use 365 for any futures, except for uh, uh, except for interest rates futures, which is 360 days, as well as um, um, uh, foreign exchange futures also use 360. But other futures all use 365 because every day you incur interest. So it comes out your cost of carry is 0 0.65. So a fair value is 1645.65. This, um, this fair value is very important is for you to use for hedging purposes, okay? For hedging, for arbitraging also. Okay, so you use the it for hedging, okay? You use it, uh, can hedge a portfolio worth just now was uh, I think the price is one six four five. Okay, you times it with fifty. Is it uh, eight two five? Eight eighty two thousand eighty two thousand. Okay, but you only pay. I only pay four thousand to hedge my portfolio of eighty two thousand. Okay. So, uh. Of course, if anybody asks you what's futures for, you say for aging purpose. So that's what we do futures so that we can limit the risk, the downside risk. And if the market falls, okay, I would lose in the stock market. But because I sold in the futures, I would make back in the futures. So my loss in the stock market is offset by the gains in the futures market. That's what it means. Okay. Uh, this is my Malaysian stock example or my just normal stock example, okay, which is 
uh, if you got stock A and 50% of your portfolio is in stock A, then you just times your beta of my stock A is 108. So I just times it with my weighted beta of 0 0.454. Similarly, I do the same for stock B. Then I can calculate my weighted beta, you know, your beta of the portfolio is equal to WA beta A plus WB beta B in your investment cost, right? Ah, so my beta in portfolio is 1.04. So I use, if my beta is 1.04, okay, then I have got 10 million now to H. Wow, I fund manager suddenly already. Okay, divided by 1645, okay, which is the underlying spot price times 50 multiplier. Then I times it with my beta of 1.04. I need to sell one two six point four four October two one. It's October two one two one is this year lah two two one contract. So I cannot sell point four four contracts. So I sell hundred and twenty one two six. Always round down. Okay, you don't want to over hedge, you but you can under hedge. Okay, slightly. Okay, so in this case, I pay a margin of, uh, I think I pay a margin of 930. I don't know why my zeros are all there, okay? I only pay a margin of 931, okay? Um, uh, 931, 1,000, million, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, okay? Uh, all right, then... Uh, Sorry, uh, this is Indonesian example. Okay, this is Gita side. No wonder I get confused. Okay, uh, Gita, you want to take over? Uh, no, 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 it's okay. Um, perhaps I'll just um, add along the way. Okay, okay. And now the Indonesian stocks, uh, Gita stocks, all right, is a uh, uh, bank right yet. Okay, your biggest stock, all right, and Bank Central Asia. She gave me the two examples and I wanted to talk about it just now. Okay, uh, it's worth 37 billion. Okay, she has she has this big portfolio. Okay, and the Bank Riot, uh, uh Bank Riot, uh, uh, Indonesia, the beta you can check it out. All right, uh, according to me, it's according to what I found was 0 0.9. Okay, and then the uh, Bank Central Asia is 0 0.6. But Bank Central Asia is much bigger, okay? The the price, much higher price. So Gita has a stock of 30, 37 billion Indonesian rupiah. And the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, soon. And then the beta is 0 0.63. She calculated already. So now what she do is she put the 37 billion, okay? And then amount to be H and divided by your contract value. Her contract value is somewhere up there. I'm not sure it's not the other side. It's, uh, you, you can check, you all can check, okay? The 460.94, that is the IDX at, uh, I think at the beginning of the month or something like that when we did, okay? Times your 100,000 rupiah. And then you times it, I missed out the value of the contract times by beta, 0 0.63. So you need 505.7, or in this case, round down 505 uh, futures. So Gita needs to sell 505 IDX30 uh, futures to hedge her position of 37 billion Indonesian rupiah. And she has to pay a margin how much uh, that cannot come already she counted for me that's why i don't know how much you had to swell the margin the margin should be 931 uh million not billion okay million rupees. okay um which is uh which is like four percent right yes only four percent mm. so uh with this she can start to be a fund manager already because you have got two sides she has got the stocks and then she said the stocks is good okay and uh just now um okay um just now she mentioned that uh bank riot stocks have got rights issue and then uh central 
Asia Bank also has got a stock split. Okay, when you when this happens, okay, remember just now this example of the um, index, index how you calculate the index, the index will change. All right, all your right. IDX thirty will change. All right, but the value should be the same. Okay, the they will they were numbers of shares will increase for Bank Raya Indonesia. Okay, but your price will come down, right? And then for uh, stock uh, Central Asia also, the stock split, the price also will come down and the number of shares will increase. Uh, certainly there's a lot of increase in shares, okay? But the value should be the same. Thank you. Is that not gonna show us example, is it? Sorry? Okay, never mind. I don't think so. We have time already for the okay, example. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot for calculating the margin. You're welcome, Doctor. Okay. okay, maybe we'll go through at least three minutes here, but we'll go over a little bit over time. And I like to take the questions, okay, uh, from you all. Okay, good. I see a lot of chats coming up. Okay, who trades the derivatives? We spoke about hedges, which means that they already have an underlying physical position like Gita, 37 billion rupiah. <laughs> and she needs to hedge, okay? She needs this... Uh, IDX30 to H a position. Or it could be speculators like myself. Nothing to do. I just see market going up. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> uh, when I see market coming down, I jump out of the window already with the bear. Okay. You make a lot of money with the bears. Okay. And then the other thing that I uh, love, I love, okay, is the arbitrage. Arbitrage means that you want just now i we, i just show you or share with you the uh futures uh fair value okay any time is not at that fair value then there is an arbitrage opportunity okay uh if say the for my fki just now was uh, one six uh one six four six right any time is about maybe 14 points higher than 1646 then i can uh, sell the futures and buy the underlying 30 stocks okay uh, why do i say 14 points 14 points to me is 14 times uh, 50 okay it's because 14 points is my transaction cost it's a lot of transaction costs okay so anytime i see something like that i can easily do arbitrage and it's riskless profit. I will take the riskless profit at the end of the month. Okay, so speculators take positions, speculating now, speculating like trading. Okay, they are motivated to take the positions that you know the hedges don't want. Okay, to take the risk, I'm gonna risk my capital. Okay, I go into futures is because number one, I can sell short, number two, it's very liquid. And number three, there's very high uh, uh, leverage. I just put a little bit of money there, I get a lot of return. And then I uh, got um, the transaction cost is very low compared to stocks. That's why I use futures to speculate. Okay, so there are a few kinds of speculators. It could be a scalper. A scalper is somebody who sits there looking at the screen all day, cannot be guitar myself all right as we they trade on big huge volume but for my case malaysia it's small profit like three points they quickly take the three points so they don't hold the position overnight okay but day trader you know takes a longer view we one hour two hours some maybe half a day whatever it is and they also don't hold position overnight. That's why I didn't check just now Indonesian um, uh, uh, futures market. But in Malaysia stock mar futures market close uh, 15 minutes after the stock market is for all these traders and all these couples to get out of the market, close their position uh, at night. Okay, so they trade medium volume kind of position, and it's all intraday trade. So maybe they don't. You know, the exchange do not require them to have like the 4,000 margin. And so then they can trade more. But as long as they close before the end of the day, okay? Then the position trader is like me. I take a view of the market. 
and then I hold for days. That's very good, really. For weeks, it's even better. If I can hold for months, okay, that means I'm very, very rich, really, all right? <laughs> that is a position trader, which means you're right. If I'm wrong, cut loss. Cut loss, okay? Uh, then arbitraging is uh, one hand, if the, just now I said, if the stock market, if the futures market is much higher, like 14 points higher than the stock market, what you do is sell the futures and buy the stocks. You cannot do the other way around. You cannot buy, sell the stocks. You can. You can sell the stocks if you have the stocks. But if you don't have the stocks, then you do sell futures, buy stocks, and make the 14 points difference. Okay? It's like this. When the futures is higher than the fair value, just now's fair value, then the arbitrager would sell the futures and buy the 30 stocks. Very interesting. Yeah. But this only happens at a very short period of time and you have to be very fast. Okay. But over at the end of the period, I will get the profit. Okay. But in between, okay, there is kind of hedge imperfection which means it's called basis risk. The basis risk is that the futures and the stock market do not move exactly together at the same correlated rate, okay? One might go up, the other might go down, may do anything they like because the futures is trade, it's also it's got its own supply and demand and the cash market also is own supply and demand. So the futures and cash market do not correlate perfectly. But I'll definitely get the profit at the end of the month. Why? Because the stock, the futures market used the stock market price to close all open position. It, the two prices will be the same. Uh, that's why you can get the profit. Okay. Okay, that's it. Okay, we're only like three minutes over time, but I am glad to um, take the questions, all right? Uh, go and read, okay? Options, futures, and other derivatives, okay? By now, it's nine edition again, nine edition again, by John Howe. That was the textbook I used in uh, UNSW uh, many years ago, and I'm still sure that it's valid. I'm using it now, okay, for my classes. Uh, it's good, okay? I can use that. Then uh, my research, okay, I was going to give you a guitar in particular, okay, maybe she's coming over to see me, all right, in Malaysia, uh, in University of Malaya, okay. Uh, as uh, uh, I'm doing algo trading. Algo trading is cut loss, cut loss and cut loss. <laughs> algo trading means that you're trading whatever you see the patterns in the market, okay, they can be put into algorithms, formulas. Okay, ah, once you can program that, and then of course you program the stop loss as well, and you program the uh, profits to be three times more than the stop loss, then you can make profit at the end, okay? And I like to do uh, futures, is because the futures you can actually sell, okay? If you, my benchmark is buy and hold, okay? So if you can sell and you can time your selling and your buying, then you can do better than the buy and hold, okay? Most of the other, my other research is all automated trading for traders, same, uh, it's also a goal trading, okay? Uh, I do futures, which is uh, like the papers that I wrote, uh, do economic statistics. You can put in economic statistics inside the, pricing of your futures. Just now you saw fair value, right? In fair value, we use the um, interest rates, which is your economic statistics, okay? Minus your dividend yields, that is your stock, okay? Uh, you can use that, but I'm using exchange rates. You can look at volatility. You can look at other people's return, okay? And then compare it across your area. And you try to use, for my case, I use ANN uh, to predict the next day's return. Okay, that's what my student did. Okay, um, then um, the other one is I also started from technical analysis. Uh, you do technical analysis in your classes, right? In your investment class. Okay, so, from yeah. uh, from technical analysis, you can uh, start to build up your technical analysis. Is like maybe moving average. 
is an algorithm. So you can expand the algorithm and you can use the algorithm to like, and say in this case, I use this algorithm. I change it a little bit, moving average. I made it adjustable, which means that like, uh, I call it AMA prime, which means that like a uh, time when the market is not moving, okay, I don't want to get whipsaw. Whipsaw means uh, I'll get kicked out and unnecessarily, okay? I don't want to be making losses all the time. So I use a longer moving average. So this AMA can be moving longer moving average when uh, market is ranging. And then when market is trending, uh, market is going up now, okay? I want to jump in very fast. I don't want to wait and confirm 21 days, 30 days, 34 days, uh, 34 days, 55 days. I don't want to do that, all right? I just want to jump in and maybe day 13 or day eight, I want to jump in already and make more profit. Uh, that's why we use this, uh, this kind of technical analysis. It's like that. I started with moving average, then I went to dynamic adjustable moving average. And then I use a new neural network to calculate uh, the next day to forecast the uh, futures market. Okay. Uh, the other one is my students, uh, Ali, okay, call him Ali. And he also is also forecasting the same thing. Asian markets, East Asia markets or Asian markets indices futures, just like what we spoke just now. But he's using a uh, hybrid. We are talking about hybrid models. And he's using Wavelet and PCA and also ANN. Uh, so all this, I see a lot of chat. Okay, maybe I take the chats now. Okay. Okay, where shall we start? Gita, beginning. Uh, yes, I think it's from uh, Richie's question in the beginning. Okay, I'll start uh, from the beginning, okay? Hi, Is Richie. Uh, do you want to ask the question yourself, Richie? Uh, he's asking about advice for a uh, college student. Uh, what investment can you advise us? And also, do you recommend us to become a trader or investor? <laughs> <laughs> Where is Richie? Richie, can I see your face? New message. Okay, Richie, um, let's see. College student, okay, yes. what investment? I think he's uh, around 20. I, I, 20 I, I, I mean, I dare not recommend you to, you know, for any investment at the moment, okay? I'm not your lecturer. But when I was in UNSW, okay, uh, the lecturer says you don't have money, okay? All of you share, 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 share your money, okay? And go and buy a stock in, um, in uh, ASX, Australia Stock Exchange. And so that you will understand what stock means, all right? Uh, buying and selling stocks means. That's what he asks us to do, okay? Do you recommend us to be a trader? I'm always a trader, okay? So of course I recommend my students to be a trader, but to be a trader is a hard road, okay? It's, um, uh, well, I, I can be trading, you can be losing. Uh, if you can take the losses or you can know how to stop loss, then you can be a trader, all right? Otherwise, it's a long and hard road, okay? <laughs> Richie, you want to speak? No, okay. That's he's shy, I think, okay. Huh? Uh, I think he's shy. Because um, currently in Indonesia, uh, Dr. Jacinta, uh, there's a lot of young investors going in because of the, uh, you know, influencers and, you know, famous people on Instagram and YouTube are encouraging them. And there's also this uh, application for young investors so that they can start investing by just just the amount of uh, 1 million, I think it equals like 300 or 3,000 ringgit Malaysia just to start uh, investment. So I think it's a trend right now uh, within the millennials uh, okay. for the students. So um, I think most of their questions is that uh, what instrument and what investment because uh, there's also about robot trading 
and yes, everything. Yes, I'm, I'm into robot trading. Yeah, that's me. Yes. Yes, yes that, uh, I think they come to the right place then. Uh, so, robot trading is a black box, okay? You do not know what's inside the black box. I'm telling what, what's inside the black box, all right? The black box is what I'm showing you on the screen right now. Uh, yeah, okay, I get what you mean. But what I, okay, my advice would be, okay, to, if, if you cannot afford it, then do paper trade, all right? You can do paper trading. I would advise, in fact, um, I like to take, oh no, I, I like to take students, okay, for, for trading competitions, uh, you can do that. Uh, then you will learn a lot in the trading competitions. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know what kind of money you have, what you can afford to lose, but I would recommend, okay, uh, Richie, to know how to stop loss first before you know how to make profit. Yeah, I think that depends a lot on, on somebody's risk appetite because mm -hmm. some person will feel like when their stocks drop like 5%, they're already like, I got to get out, get out, get out now. Yes, get or, out, get or, out, get out. I agree, I agree. Or some people uh, like me will just, oh, the price is uh, going down and I still... You're uh, average. Uh, yes, <laughs> and then do averaging down or somebody who just, you know, like really, really patient and uh, waited until the stocks uh, bounce back or things like that. I think it really depends okay. on somebody's... You can, somebody's you can... Like, Gita, you can average for your stocks, okay? You do long term and then you earn dividends. But you cannot do that for futures. In the futures, yes. Yeah, futures is a limited period. Okay. Yes. Uh, so what about the stop loss? Is there, do you have like the certain percentage? Like when uh, it that's, a, that's a $1 million question. I wrote, uh -huh. I wrote an article, okay? I wrote an article for US magazine, a stock and commodities magazine, technical analysis for stock and commodity. The first question they come back to me is, how do you set the stock loss? How do you program your stop loss? Okay, I'm telling you, there is um, the stop loss, okay, it's, um, it's not 2% like some people say, okay, or 5% like you say up to, it's a function of volatility. Sometimes market is very volatile, sometimes it's not. And it's a function of volatility. And it's also, you want to put your stop loss at a place where it will not be triggered unnecessarily. Meaning that you want to put a stop loss where you want to get out. If the market is really against you, then you want to get out. You don't want to put a stop loss at a place where you are stopped out. And then later it goes into your direction. Uh, that's where you put your stop loss. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think that also answers some of the questions here. Uh, robot trading and um, because uh, I think some, um, I'm not sure about this, but in Indonesia, this uh, robot trading, they promise like to get certain profit, like 5% in yeah, a day. Yeah. So I, I, I mostly think it's I mean, a scam. <laughs> But I'm not uh, sure, like, like what's, what's the real robot trading and um, what's your opinion on that? Okay, my opinion on that is that you, Gita, all right, and the students, okay, do your own trading program. And then you see, in the past, all right, a lot of people say that trading programs and robot trading programs work, okay. Then you, you will say that, Okay, but the thing is that when you get in, it's another story. Ah, so it's best to do your own trading program. It's best to be, do up your own robot, your robot trading. Then yeah. you understand what it is, and then you will know how to trade it, and then you know how the market reacts because you know what's inside the black box. Yeah, because I'm not I'm not sure about this uh, robot trading as well because mostly they're in uh, forex, in foreign exchange, or in cryptocurrency. Yeah, so. cryptocurrency <laughs> now. Yeah, that's interesting. Yes, a cryptocurrency, you know, it made a lot of money and you can lose a lot of money also. But it's very okay. interesting. It's very fast. Uh, yeah, that's what you uh, need. You need to know what's inside the box. All right. 
to be able to to decipher how the box work. Somebody wants to talk, is it? Somebody wants to ask question, it's okay? Yes. Ah. Don't Make be shy. Sure. It's Make a sure time to ask me all the questions now. Kapan lagi dapat kesempatan nanya langsung sama uh, Dr. Jacinta? Uh, kalau mau dalam bahasa Indonesia, it's okay. I'll translate it for you. Akan saya bantu uh, translate ke bahasa Inggris. Silakan anyone. Wah, ada malu. <laughs> They're shy, I think. Okay. Uh, DJ okay. asked me here. He's in uh, class. Yes, um, all, uh, there's also another question like this. Um, if the market continues to fall, uh, when should I switch to a cash or fixed income or cash equivalent instrument? Should you switch to a saver option from Sinda? Uh, should you say, you should have switched earlier already. Now we don't know when the market when the market is going to bounce back up already. <laughs> In the first place, you should have your, you should have your, you should have cut loss already, okay? Um, you have to look, okay. What, I think that is a technical analysis question to me, okay? It's like, if you see the market coming down already, then you should have put in your hedge on, which is your futures contract. And, you want to, you can do that your switch, you, you call it switch earlier, all right? So that you can, you can replicate, okay? The duplicate, replicate, okay? The cash flow, yeah, you can use options here that you have learned. Uh, you can use the options to replicate the cash flow in the, um, in case it goes back to your direction, but the remaining money, you know, put into a safe haven, Okay, safe haven, maybe it's your deposit if you've got interest rates, or I don't know if you've got bonds. Okay, maybe your bonds are safe, uh, the good credit rating bonds. Yes. Uh, so you you would have first look at the, uh, I think Gita looks at the fundamentals. Okay, I look at the technicals. Uh, why I look at the technicals is because a fundamental is like, I was a research analyst. I'm told what to write, okay? Uh, which talk to recommend. Whereas in okay. technical analysis is the traders themselves, is the fund managers themselves. They are putting the money there. You can see them put the money there. Then you follow what they do. Uh, so that's why you follow what the big boys, I call them big boys, do. Uh, whereas uh, the fundamental will follow what you do. The fundamentals will later write the story after they see the market goes up. Uh, so to me, that is slow. I used to be a research analyst before, so I'm told what to write. <laughs> that is your, your <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm more like the fundamental version, and uh, unlike the technical, but I also like to tell my students, you can check the composition from mutual funds the big boys, uh, yes. like, like Dr. Uh, Jacinta said, you can check the composition of the mutual funds. Where did they uh, put their money into? Which stocks are they buying? And mm -hmm. it's usually updated every day, right? For, for the mutual funds and for the institutional investors, usually they put up their, uh, maybe it's monthly or daily report. So you can check uh, the composition for the stocks there. You can check Very on uh, rexa.com. Uh, that's one of the mutual fund portal here, uh, Dr. Jacinta. So oh, you very good. I, yeah, I tell my students to here, you can check uh, what they buy, uh, what's the uh, dana kelolaan, what's the dana kelolaan, uh, the investor's money, where do they put it, uh, whether they buy stocks or uh, bonds, uh, you can check there. Yeah, you're yeah, following the professionals. Very good. She's following the big boys. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. That's a good, that's a very good advice. Uh, did you do it as well? I didn't do it, okay? I look <laughs> at technicals, all right? But my students do it. Because and win competitions. What and is win competitions, okay? So you can try that too. 
This, 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 that's what I thought about. They look at the best winners and they follow. <laughs> and um, what, what's the most uh, important uh, technical analysis tool for you, Dr. Jacinta? Is two, it the two. volume? It or used the... to be. It used to be moving average. Then I changed all the moving average to adaptive moving average, adjustable moving average. And then now I do, uh, I put an ANN as well. So that it's, um, the weightage is uh, not, is, you, you see, usually your a, uh, neural network is, um, usually your regression is linear. But if yes. you do ANN, then it gives different weights in different periods, then it will be non-linear. So you you can do that. That's the black box. Uh, I use moving average. Okay. A different I think It's really interesting that you you keep uh, mentioning about the technical and the futures, but you still remind us about the risk, about the black box and the uncertainty behind it. So yeah, I just want this to be a lesson to you guys as well because um, stock market doesn't always. Uh, linear or, or doesn't always promise um, capital gain yes, or profits yes. with uh, yes. with a high return comes high risk also mm. so be Agreed. uh don't uh how do i uh, usually the the advice here is that don't use hot money hot money means the ones that you will need uh in the in the short term uh use uh, the money that you have, not the ones you borrow, and also <laughs> yes. uh, it, because because there's so many stories about uh, students trying. Uh, oh, I heard about this cryptocurrency, so I bought it, but now all the money is gone, and I cannot pay my tuition fee. <laughs> yes, that's the new story, doctor. <laughs> yeah, you don't use your tuition fee to trade, okay? It's like a gamble. Uh, you don't do. You don't use the tuition fee to gamble. <laughs> yes, because it's not for uh, gambling. Most people see it as uh, an opportunity to get rich uh, quickly because they don't know. They only know about the good sides about the. Uh, profit stories from people but those people who make the stories they buy the stocks long before you did and <laughs> they take all your money <laughs> yeah they somebody was okay it's a zero game is a zero sum game, game. yeah yes, when you exactly. when you make money somebody is losing when you lose money somebody is making gaining, if yeah. you're not the big boys <laughs> exactly. usually you'll be losing okay yes. you only make money when you're the big boys so what to do Follow the big boys. <laughs> That's a really good advice, uh, doctor. Okay, I think uh, perhaps we still have uh, like five minutes. Does anybody yeah, want? That's what I was trying to see all this, the, the link. They cannot fulfill the link. I don't know what is this. I can fill the link. I think it's just for the, the browser. Yeah. Yeah, the presentation. Sorry, the presence list. Yeah. But, uh, can anybody uh, access it? Double checking. Oh, okay. Um, perhaps this is the last opportunity for asking a question. Anyone? Uh, you can speak directly. Yeah, please. Or... I want to ask a question, please. Yes. Hi, uh, Chef Rudin. Hi, Miss Jacinta. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you a question. Uh, what do you think about fractional shares? Uh, you asked stocks do you into that too uh, i'm not into u.s stocks sorry the u.s stocks okay are very difficult to trade because the market there is very efficient when it's efficient market then the profits are not there i've yeah. tried I, I tried researching u.s stocks okay many times um i my students have done um pair trading like buy one, sell the other kind of thing. And in US, it's very difficult to do. Um, if I may add to Shafruddin, because uh, remember that the efficient market means with one news and the prices will changes accordingly at the moment. So 
uh, the more efficient the market is, the less opportunity to gain profit because all investors will get the same information at the same time. So is that right? Uh, yes, Gita, thanks for explaining for me. Thank you, Gita. It's, it's good. Yes. So yeah, be um uh, because because also again I have to tell you, doctor, that uh currently there's a new app for investing in Indonesia that's posting that you can buy uh, rather than buying the new iPhone that comes up next week. Why don't you just buy the AAPL shares mm. uh, that will never go down and things like that. The the marketing. Yeah. I think I saw know. something like that for Amazon Amazon shares, right? Yes, exactly. Rather than buying the product, you can be the owner of the company. But I, I also think it's not that easy because uh, the, the the challenge of uh, going into a U.S. stock market and also the exchange risk is also there. Yes, correct. Your exchange rate is also there. You make money on the stock, but you lose money on the exchange rate. <laughs> Yes, especially um, for Indonesian rupees is not in the strong position against the US dollar. So yeah, I think why heighten the risk that's already high enough yeah. for and us retail investors, but we have uh, some people for themselves, perhaps they like a uh, high risk, high return, right? So yeah. double the risk, double the return as well. <laughs> yes. I I am quite concerned because it's like, I'm hearing and reading that your investments are not all in the broking houses. It's, uh, usually we invest because I'm, I am a broking, futures broker. Uh, we, invest in, um, we invest through all the broking houses that are licensed with the Securities Commission in Malaysia kind of thing. Maybe times have changed, Gita, I don't know. You know, you have got dissemination this intermediation of financial intermediaries, you all don't go to um, recognized banks or working houses anymore. Is it? I'm not, I'm not sure. Usually you, if to be safe, okay, to be um, within the regulation, then you will be trading with a futures broker or stock brokers, which is uh, registered with your stock exchange and uh, under the preview of Securities Commission, just in case you lose money, then you can still, the, the, the stockbroker or the futures broker is still liable. Okay. Um, I think we have the last question here from Rafi. Uh, is the investment value or value investing, is it the same with uh, long-term investment? And so it's the same as fundamental analysis. Value Very analysis. good. Very good question, Rafi. I think you want to see me also. I will show your face also. But yes, uh, your value investing is um, your Warren Buffet, right? Uh, he is based on value of the company, which is fundamental analysis. Your security analysis, you read that book, okay? Uh, uh, it's something like, okay, value versus something like fundamental analysis, agree? And it's also long-term, uh, but your investment value this, the, is not the same as the long-term investment, okay? You can buy it and then you can sell it tomorrow. But um, value investing is, you know, Warren Buffett style, okay? Uh, way back in... 1940s, I think 1940s with doubts. Uh, they, they, are, they are asking for value investing and you can see the, the you can see the, what, results are. Second most important <laughs> person, the richest man of the world, okay? Okay, Gila wants to ask a question. What is my favorite pair in futures trading? I don't have, a favorite pair because I don't do pair trading in futures. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, he says favorite pair in futures market. Okay. Um, futures market can be like maybe a gold or your your oil. I like oils. Okay. Uh, so you can do oil. Okay. Um, I was thinking you said a pair in stock index futures. Okay. Stock index futures. Uh, used to be my FKLI, but it's so slow now. Okay. It, you can go for something faster. Uh, um, 
Last time I last time I, I'm not trading now. Okay, I I traded Nikkei, uh, Australia and uh, Hang Seng. Hang Seng, I lost money. Okay, uh, so you can you can try you can try the Asia all the Asia uh, Asian tigers. I can try all those. Asian tigers. Yeah, does that yeah. answer your question, Kilang? Yeah, Kilang, you want to show your face? Uh, yeah, thanks for uh, your okay. your answer, Miss Jessica. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, what what are you trying to ask? Um, like you want to trade? Is it? Uh, I'm sorry. I think he's a futures trader as well. Oh, or, okay. Or forex, forex. Uh, oh, you're doing foreign exchange, is it? Uh, yeah, Miss Jacinta, I'm. Oh, that's why you say pair. Traders. So, which pair are you doing? Uh, in Nasdaq and gold. Oh, Nasdaq and gold. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <it's> <laughs> <a lot. laughs> that's way way faster than me. Okay, it's too fast market for me. Um, as long as you put your stop loss in, that's good. Did you do uh, stop loss, Kilang? I always uh, apa? Hit SL, hit SL, stop loss. Usually yeah, hit yes. stop loss, but uh, my money management uh is risk reward ratio uh up to uh one satu banding dua. One, one to two. two comparison yeah. for for the sorry. What? Gimana mas Kilang? Uh, but pakai bahasa Indonesia aja bu ya. Bahasa Indonesia, bahasa Indonesia. Boleh, boleh, boleh. Yes, can. Uh, uh, saya kadang-kadang sering kena stop loss. Yeah. Uh, dan uh, tapi money management menyelamatkan saya uh, karena risk reward saya di atas satu banding dua itu. One to two is it? Jadi lossnya, misal saya entry itu loss saya uh, misal lima dolar, tapi keuntungan saya saya pasang sepuluh dolar. I, I think you mean one to two, is it? It's like your stop is uh, uh, one th uh, your profit is twice as much as your loss, is it? Yes. I think I think that's a good idea. It's a good idea. Yeah, that's what I do. I do one to three, but usually I don't get the three. <laughs> I <would> probably, <laughs> yeah. I, I say only after transaction costs, okay? Transaction. You got transaction cost, you got your slippage cost, okay? You won't get that. If you get two point something, it's good enough already. So uh, the message is aim higher. <laughs> I use uh, Octa FX broker uh, and uh, no, about zero cost. So oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I know. Oh, zero cost. Oh, I know, okay. because it's in Forex. Yes, uh, it's in Forex market, yes. Okay. Thank Good. you. Kila. Thank you, yeah. Dr. Jacinta and Bumadi. Thank you for participating and joining uh, with high enthusiasm. Um, I think Gilang is the last question here. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you uh, very much, everybody. Thanks. That concludes our uh, lecture for today. It already uh, extend like five minutes. Yeah, but sorry that, about that. Because oh, no, no, that's because everybody's so interested in what you're saying. So thank you so much, Dr. Jacinta, for the insight and to make us more interested in uh, futures investment while still knowing the risk, not just you know giving us uh, the black box, but to encourage us to study what's in the black box itself. Yes, thank you, Dr. Jacinta. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Gita, for organizing this. She's very good, okay? I'm looking at her. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming, you know, a Saturday, and then you all take the time, which means that you're really interested, and I wish you all the best, Ilang. I wish you all the best in your trading, okay? Remember your stop loss. Thank you, Miss. Uh... Thank you, Dr. Jacinta. Okay. I really wish we can meet uh, directly, meet in person someday after yes. this. Come, 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 over, come over to UM. <laughs> For the PhD? Amen. Amen. Yes. I don't know about it yet. But it will, it's going to be very nice uh, because I know you already there.
Okay, you're all welcome to come. <laughs> thank all you the best for your class all participants. Uh, thank you, Pak Tantowi, for thank organizing you. this Zoom meeting and everything. Thanks, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Jacinta, <laughs> for being here. So nice to see you. Yes, wonderful session. <laughs> thank you, and I wish you all a good day and good weekend. Semoga okay. bermanfaat. May this be a fruitful event to you all. Thank you and good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, afternoon. Thank you. 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 Thank